live in high definition. This is NBC Montana News at 5. The National Weather Service issuing an urgent fire warning impacting several Montana counties with strong winds and dry conditions expected to make fires a serious danger this 4th of July. Good evening everyone, I'm Montana McLaughlin. And I'm Hawk Hammer. Taylor Winkle has the night off. Let's get right to severe weather alert team meteorologist Matt Gray for the latest. Matt. Yeah, said uh, this fire weather warning coming at the probably most inopportune time here as a lot of people are going to be outside using fireworks and uh, up at the barbecue grills, etc etc. Let's take a look at what this affects and basically this extends all the way from Phillipsburg the garrison area to the southern border with Idaho. So a very large section. That's the entirety of the Beaverhead Deer Lodge National Forest. You can see some more communities that will be affected by this fire weather warning. It will start about two in the afternoon and will continue on through 9 p.m. tomorrow. Winds anywhere between 15 to 25 miles an hour. You get onto the ridge tops and we're talking about 40 mile an hour gusts at times. Likely the uh, strongest winds are going to be between 40 and seven. Also, humidity going to be very low, lower than today, anywhere between 12 and 20 percent in the afternoon. Very dry, very windy, so fires could spread fast. We'll be talking about that and some thunderstorms in the area tonight coming up. Thank you, Matt. And again, there are seven counties involved. Beaverhead, Deer Lodge, Silver Bow, Powell, Jefferson, Granite, and Madison. The warning covers the entire Beaverhead Deer Lodge National Forest. We've reached out to law enforcement and fire crews in Beaverhead and Deer Lodge. We've yet to hear back about any new restrictions on fireworks, but with up to 40 mile per hour gusts, officials want you to be cautious and stay aware of your surroundings. A teenager who got lost in the Seeley Lake area apparently set multiple fires in effort to signal help. The 19-year-old was camping at Lake Inez near Seeley Lake, and he left his group yesterday to go fishing, leaving most of his essential gear behind. He got lost and spent the night. He was not prepared, trying to stay warm. Search and rescue went looking for him and found him, but were unable to land nearby. Two bare air flew in from the flathead for the rescue, but by then he had set multiple fires. Fire crews are responding to the blazes. It's unclear how many fires were set, if the fires are spreading, or if the teen will face charges. The Bitterroot is also seeing breezy weather this evening. Bad news for fire crews working to contain the observation fire. That's right. It's continued to grow over the weekend. More than 200 homes are still under a stage one evacuation notice. Residents there told they may need to leave their homes at a moment's notice. Today, more homes north of the stage one evacuation notices are getting visits from fire officials over fire prevention and how they can stay fire ready. Right now, the fire stands at over 1,300 acres. Breezy weather isn't helping the flames. The fire is extending north into Hayes Creek area. Fire crews say they hope to keep the fire contained in that area. You can see from the map here that um, the, the fire is, has, has moved slightly north um, and it's in Hayes Creek. And you can see that they've painted, this, this represents a retardant line. Um, and the lines down below to the east here represent dozer lines. So. And we're now on day eight of the observation fire. Crews benefited from 60% humidity last night, but again, those strong winds are a concern. Up to 30 miles an hour today. There's double the number of personnel working the, through the end of the week. The area the fire is burning has not received fire in uh, 25 days. And further south near Ennis, firefighters are also working to manage two fires out there. The Poles and Fine fires are burning in the Gravelly Mountains. It's been 100 years since the last time there was a fire out there. 33 acres are burning and it's not yet contained. Firefighters say they expect these fires to get bigger and keep burning in the coming weeks. To have uh, multiple acres on fire basically at the start of our fire season may be indicative of what we're uh, facing for this fire season. Um, but it is early. I mean, fire season up here can run through September some years and even into October. The fires were started by lightning on Thursday and are one mile apart. As a result of the fire, there are partial closures of Forest Service Road 290. Anyone traveling in that area should make plans for an alternate route. We're tracking fires around the clock, and you can too. Just head to a special section at NBCMontana.com and you'll find the latest incidents and forecasts. And with all these fires and dry weather, four Montana counties have been placed on drought alert. They include Glacier, Teton, Pondera, and the northern part of Lewis and Clark. 
Experts say precipitation in those counties is nearly half of what's expected this time of year. And because of those dry conditions, there are going to be some firework restrictions. They are illegal in Missoula County this year. You can light off snappers, toy smoke devices, snakes, glow worms, and sparklers, however. That ban has affected fireworks stands this year as well. One out in Bonner says their busiest day was Thursday and Friday, but today sales were slower than expected. They say after Missoula's fireworks show was canceled, many people went out of town to make their own fireworks shows. And as a reminder, several businesses and services will be closed tomorrow. City and post offices will be closed. Current pool in Missoula will be closed. And Splash Montana will be open with reduced hours from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Missoula's Mountain Line bus service will also be out of operation, but will resume July 5th at 7 a.m. Law enforcement has also increased patrols across the state this holiday weekend. Missoula Police and Gallatin Sheriff's Department says they've both responded to increased firework-related calls. They have deputies specially assigned to respond to these incidents. Officers are also monitoring for MIPs, DUIs, and underage drinking, but right now they say it's been business as usual. After the latest round of terrorist attacks abroad, the Orlando nightclub massacre, authorities are on high alert. Tens of millions of Americans are hitting the road. NBC's Morgan Radford reports. The nation's largest cities and busiest airports, heavily guarded by armed officers. You know, I, I think it's, it feels more secure. It really does. Um, you know, because I don't have eyes in the back of my head, but it does feel good to know that there's someone watching and, um, and looking out for us. Trained canines at LAX, where there's a record 1.2 million travelers this weekend. We flew earlier this morning to make sure we could kind of beat the rush. Authorities at many airports will be in and out of uniform. You'll have behavior detection people that will be in this area, and you'll see also local law enforcement working with DHS uh, for a presence out there and the airport police as well. At JFK Airport in New York, travelers say they're not afraid. So this isn't stopping you. Fear isn't stopping it you. It is not. We live with uh, the world as it is today and live with the risks and what happens. So we go about our living and live our lives and travel and go where we go and do what we do. But while many are focused on terrorism in the sky, the real threat may be in the car. July 4th being one of the deadliest days on the road. Packed highways slowed down by accidents like this one in Florida, where a bus and semi-truck collided killing five people and injuring 25 more. The Tallahassee Democrat capturing the aftermath. I've never seen anything of this magnitude, especially this number of fatalities. On the road or in the air, a call for caution and security as we remember our freedom. This 4th of July holiday, records are expected to be broken for number of travelers. AAA estimates over 43 million people will be traveling, in part thanks to low gas prices. And coming up after the break, a state of emergency in four Florida counties. Find out what's getting in the way of a 4th of July on the beach. And the severe weather alert team is tracking severe weather for Independence Day. Matt Gray has what you need to know before you launch any fireworks. This is not about banking. It's about raising a family and building for tomorrow. It's about an empty nest and writing the next great chapter. It's about a home full of memories and a place we can retire. It's about local staff being here through the life of your mortgage. At Missoula Federal Credit Union, it's never been just about banking. This is life, and we're in it together. I've been a small business owner for 35 years, and I've seen a lot of politicians come and go. Most of them are a lot like the mounts I do here, they're full of stuff, but not Greg Gianforte. I know Greg not as a politician, but as a small businessman, conservationist, and outdoorsman. Greg's been dragging his trophies here for over 20 years. I know Greg Gianforte has a great head on his shoulders, and he's got quite a few on his walls, too. As America's longest-lasting pickups, Ram's continued leadership is eye-opening. Like Ram 3500, with the best towing, and the best torque. And Ram 1500 with the best fuel economy. It's no wonder more people are driving Ram trucks than ever before. 
Join us now during the Ram Drive and Discover event. Owners or lessees of competitive vehicles get a low mileage lease on the 2016 Ram 1500 4x4 for two fifteen dollars a month. This segment of the news is brought to you by your local McDonald's. Iraqi officials are now saying at least 115 people died in a car bomb attack in Baghdad. ISIS has claimed responsibility for the attack. It was in a busy shopping district. 187 were wounded and nearly a dozen people remain unaccounted for. The initial blast was followed by a second bomb. That one killed five and injured 16. It's one of the deadliest attacks in Iraq over the last several years. The bombings targeted families and young people who had gone out after breaking their dawn to dusk Ramadan fast. This weekend, thousands of European Union supporters took to the streets of London to protest the vote to leave the EU. Here's video of that march. It went all the way to the Parliament building. Many of the marchers say they expect lawmakers to block any moves to leave the 28-nation bloc. But 52% of UK voters supported leaving back in June. Despite the slim majority to leave, a former Prime Minister of England says things are entitled to change. If if it's clear that these terms are bad for us, if we have major parts of business and the financial sector saying that this is not a good deal for us, if people start to worry about their jobs, you know, we should just keep our options open. I'm not saying we have another referendum. I'm not saying you can revisit this. I'm simply saying there's no rule about this. The vote to leave the European Union had massive international financial implications. Markets all across the globe saw huge drops. The vote passed with 58 to 40, 52 to 48. Today is the final day of U.S. Swimming Olympic trials in Omaha, Nebraska. In the pool today, just two events, women's 50-meter freestyle finals and men's 1,500-meter freestyle finals. Those events will kick off at 645 Central, just an hour ahead of Montana. And we have just 33 days now until Rio 2016. And while many watched Wimbledon this weekend, tennis athletes are also getting their game ready for the Olympics. Tennis has been played in the games going back to 1896. It was dropped, however, in 1924 when the IOC couldn't decide whether to allow professional players. Tennis came back in 1988 after a year, 64-year uh, absent with when uh, pros were then allowed to compete. The American sisters Venus and Serena Williams are the most successful Olympic tennis players. Four gold medals each. And hundreds of residents protesting in southeast Florida as a toxic blue-green algae bloom in the waterways is cutting into a crucial tourist weekend. Here's video of what it looks like down there right now. Discharge from Lake Okeechobee is causing the bloom. Swimmers are being advised not to go in the water. Some beaches have been closed. The Florida governor has called a state of emergency in four counties as the bloom has spread. Scientists haven't pinpointed exactly what's causing it, but among the factors, warmer temperatures and heavy rains this year. Some residents, though, blaming the sugar industry in the area. We have never seen an algae bloom this profound. The, the problem with this one and what's caused a catastrophe to our tourist industry is the fact that the bloom itself is so spectacular. You can see it. You can see it from the air. You can see it from the beach. You can see it destroying our estuary. Samples taken from the algae bloom contain more than 20 times the amount of toxins considered hazardous by the World Health Organization. Residents there are calling on state and federal governments to buy lands to store excess water from the lake. Fortunately, waterways around Missoula are crystal clear right now. Here's the proof. Boaters and floaters out for this 4th of July weekend enjoying some warm water, weather and cool waters. It's a tradition for many of the floaters we talked with out having a good time with their fellow Missoulians and family. You know, you just float and hang out and you know, just have a good time. Gives you a chance to hang out with your family and talk a little bit and, you know, just relax. Well, Montana, we both got tomorrow off work. What do you think? Going to go floating? Sounds like a plan. And actually, TripAdvisor says that swimming is the top 4th of July related activity. 
So for all the swimmers and floaters, let's get straight to Matt Gray. Yeah, what right. are they going to expect this weekend? Oh, man, I wish I could come floating, too, I tell you what. Be busy tomorrow, but let's, uh, yeah, let's talk about that. And uh, for floating, by and large, we're going to be good to go here, guys. Lots of sunshine. Sun and warm weather is not going to be the issue tomorrow. But in a way, it, it sort of is. As we take a look at your severe weather risk for the 4th of July, Butte, because of that fire weather warning, we are going to bump things up a little bit. Be very, very careful as we head into the afternoon with anything that could set off a spark and that extends from Butte south to the Dillon area and all the way to the state line. An isolated storm is possible areas south of Bozeman down to West Yellowstone, parts of Park County as well. Missoula and Kalispell, we're going to stay on the sunny side of things. Windy around the area this afternoon and uh, we continue to see that of the south end of Flathead Lake pushing all that water to the north and on to the eastern shore. One to two foot waves here possible for the rest of the evening. A lake wind advisory is up for Flathead Lake and that will continue on until 9 p.m. Expect breezy conditions again around the lake and for it to get a little choppy tomorrow afternoon as well as those winds move into the area. Also, we've seen some windy conditions around southwest Montana because of thunderstorms in the area. The main round of thunderstorms is now gone and we just have a few light showers and a few isolated storms that are wrapping things up as we get beyond six o'clock. Expect coverage around the area to diminish even further. So West Yellowstone, we can see a thunder shower here in a little bit. Also, a thunderstorm beginning to move into Whitehall now. A little bit of lightning, gusty winds, maybe even some beneficial rainfall with that as well. Well, but the big issue here is the lightning today. There has been a lot of it, especially across Madison County and into Gallatin County here with the big mountain ranges. And we already have a couple of fires that we mentioned earlier burning near Ennis. It would not surprise me with the severe conditions tomorrow with the fire weather warning that we see more starts because we already have probably some smoldering trees and grasses around the area. Uh, as for tonight, things will help out a little bit. We're going to be a little bit cooler than last night down to the 40s in Butte will be right around 50 for Ennis and Bozeman. 50 as well for Missoula, 46 for a low in Kalispell tonight. For your Independence Day, also helpful that it will be a little bit cooler temperature wise. Most of us are only going to get up into the 70s. Very pleasant summer weather. We are going to give it to the 80s around Bozeman, Ennis and Dillon areas south of Ennis to West Yellowstone and across the southern parts of Park County chance for an isolated thunderstorm. Otherwise you head to the north. We're going to be good to go just dealing with those windy conditions. So you kind of look at it and you think well today is pretty similar to what we're expecting tomorrow, but there is one difference and that is going to be the change in humidity uh, from what's happening now to what's happening tomorrow. So humidity right now across southwest Montana in, in the percentages of around 20 to 30 percent, a little bit worse as you head towards Missoula. Let's track this into tomorrow and show you why we have that fire weather warning here because from Salmon to Butte to Dillon, that triangle there right in the heart of where we have that fire weather warning. We're talking about single digit percentages of humidity up into the teens here as we head towards four o'clock. So in that kind of about three o'clock to about seven o'clock time frame, when it's going to be very windy, that's going to end up with some nasty stuff there. As I mentioned, 40 mile an hour gusts going to be possible up there on the ridge tops. There is better news coming here, though, as far as the weather fire wise for Butte. We're down to the 60s on Wednesday, a chance for some rain. Also next weekend, looking like it's going to be wet as well. It'll be kind of hit or miss showers as they always are this time of year, but certainly some cooler temperatures welcome at this stage. The same for Bozeman here as well. We do get up into the 80s again as we head towards Friday, but a welcome change uh, in the Gallatin Valley in Missoula. We're going to be in the 70s for a couple days here as well, bottoming out. It's 74 on Wednesday with a shower here or there across the area. And finally, we take a look at Kalispell. Could see a uh, shower late in the day on Tuesday, but the better chances will come on Wednesday. Tracking next weekend doesn't look like it's going to be nearly as pleasant as what we have seen so far this weekend, but we really need the rain. So that is a positive development, seeing some cooler and wetter weather in the forecast. I think our ties might be related. <laughs> uh, mine has more stars. A little bit close. I was like, you know, we didn't, we didn't plan that. We're very patriotic today. All oh, yeah. We're, We're doing that. pretty good. We're doing pretty good. But Ethan, what can we expect coming up here in sports? Um, the Osprey had a tremendous series. So we're going to recap that in sports coming up later. But I also had the chance, or Vince had the chance to sit down with the future voice of the Grizz. Find out more about him and why he's coming from Montana State after the break.
Head to ShopCo for the big 4th of July sale. Everything to keep your party poppin'. Cheetos and Lay's chips, two for $4. Pepsi and Coke products, four for $11 12 pack cans. Summer's in full swing with hot styles. 55% off family swimwear. And tons of tees and shorts. Americana tees for the family, $4.99 each. And 50% off shorts. Plus 55% off furniture at the 4th of July sale. Celebrate summer at your American dream. ShopCo and ShopCo.com. If you think barbecue is best in the summertime, you'll love the barbecue collection right now at Subway Restaurants. It's two of our favorite subs smothered in smoky, sweet barbecue sauce, like the carved turkey sub with thick sliced turkey or the rotisserie-style chicken with all-white meat chicken raised without antibiotics. Both are served with any veggies you want on your choice of freshly baked bread. So stop by today for the barbecue collection. Subway, fresh is what we do. Big Sky Country, you have some big road trips. And nothing's better than being behind the wheel of a Honda with real-time all-wheel drive. Honda HRV Pro Hybrid Pilot and CRV keep you safe with Honda Lane Watch and connected with Honda Lane. For all the things you're into, an all-wheel drive CRV can be yours for just $199 a month, making it the perfect ride for Montana. See your Montana Honda dealer today. A message from FireSafe Montana. Creating a defensible space is one of the keys to making your home survivable. Wood stacked next to the house should be moved to a safe distance. Remove dead and woody vegetation. Make sure that trees are limbed up and make sure that no branches are touching the house. Check the roof to make sure there is no buildup of pine needles or other debris. This message is sponsored by FireSafe Montana and aired by the Montana Broadcasters Association. Watch NBC Montana today, weekdays from 5 to 7 a.m. And now sports with Ethan Fitzgerald. Good evening, Montana. It has been a great last few days for the Missoula Osprey, from winning four games in a row to winning their first series of the season and reaching their largest attendance number in team history. And as I said, the O's swept the Helena Brewers, a team that led the division going into this series. After a rough start, Missoula is still in last place, but only two games out of first place with a record of seven wins and nine losses. It was a close one last night, but a walk-off hit by Luis Silverio brought home Yan Sanchez to give the O's a 3-2 win in the bottom of the ninth inning. And it was a well-deserved victory as the team has its first day off today after playing in 16 straight games. And for the first time in over two decades, Grizzly sports fans will hear a new voice on the radio when tuning in for football and basketball games. Riley Corcoran comes to Missoula from calling games for rival Montana State. But for this Treasure State product, there's no greater honor than representing the maroon and silver. Vince Bagby has more on Cochran taking over the booth. To get that phone call and to be the one that's going to represent them, at least be the voice on the radio to represent Grizzly Athletics to them, just such an honor and something I don't take lightly. As a native of Billings who grew up rooting for the University of Montana, becoming the voice of Grizzly Athletics has been a dream job for Riley Corcoran since middle school. Hey, I really love Grizzly Athletics and I really love broadcasting. Boy, wouldn't it be great to be the voice of the Grizz? Have that all come together, you know, some 15 years later. It's really cool. Corcoran knows he has big shoes to fill. He replaces Mick Holine on the airwaves, who dedicated his last 23 years to the same position and over three decades to the Grizzly Athletic Department. Very humbled to be in that category because I grew up listening to Mick and I actually talked with Mick on the phone. We're planning to stay in contact all the way throughout. I mean, he bleeds maroon and silver and he is such a resource for me. On paper, the job title is to host the coaches show and call play-by-play -play for football and men's basketball. But Corcoran plans to do much more with his access to Grizz Athletics. I want to be a resource uh, to be utilized. That was something that Ken Haslam and I talked about a lot. Utilize me in any sense possible. Um, the social media side of things is huge. Just creating more content and being able to be accessible to Grizz Nation out there that is hungry for that content all the time. And this is a destination spot. I'm passionate about the state of Montana. I plan to be here a very long time and uh, hopefully settle in here soon. The next exciting step for Corcoran comes on the night of September 3rd, calling play-by-play -play for the Grizzly football team's season opener, hosting St. Francis. Reporting in Missoula, Vince Bagby, NBC Montana. And that's going to do it for your sports. We'll be right back.
Watch NBC Montana News weeknights at 5, 6, and 10. You can't choose who sits next to you. But at least you can choose two of your favorites from McDonald's McPick 2 menu. Let me get the McPick 2. Make a delicious decision with the McPick 2 menu. Grab any two for $3, like a sausage burrito, sausage McMuffin, McDouble, or six-piece McNuggets. It's a great deal day and night. Hey, yeah, I like this right here. Ford Freedom Sales event is on, and Zero for 72 is back on 2016 Ford Focus, Fusion, and Escape. Plus, specially tagged vehicles get an extra 1,000 smart bonus. That means freedom from interest and freedom to choose with Ford, America's best-selling brand. Right now, get Zero for 72 months on Focus, Fusion, and Escape. Plus, specially tagged vehicles get a 1,000 smart bonus cash. Visit your local Ford store today. This 4th of July, celebrate with the biggest fireworks in America with Kenny Chesney, Pitbull, Megan Trainer, DNCE, Five Seconds of Summer, and Sarah Bareilles. Macy's 4th of July Fireworks Spectacular, live at 8, 7 Central on NBC. To be an Olympian, you gotta love the water. It's not always easy. You beat your body up. Outside of the pool, inside the pool. Staring at that black line. Putting your heart and soul in to do what it takes. The sky is the limit, and that's true. I just have to swim. Last summer, a group of Western Montana car clubs gave away a 67 Barracuda and raised over $41,000 for Camp Make-A-Dream. Well, they're at it again. The car clubs have restored a 67 Ford Galaxy convertible and are selling a limited number of $20 raffle tickets to benefit Camp Make-A-Dream. Get your tickets from car club members at local car shows where the Galaxy will be on display or by calling Camp Make-A-Dream at 549-5987. Someone's going to win this beautiful 67 Galaxy convertible. It might just as well be you. And here's a nice story out of Indonesia to end our night. Three orangutans rescued last year from Indonesia's forest fires were returned to the wild. Sabtu, Bhutan, and Marcella were rescued by the International Animal Rescue Team. Here you can see them being carried into a national park. Not an easy task. These guys were three of over 100 orangutans evacuated from the fires last year. Orangutan populations have decreased tremendously because of illegal poaching and habitat loss, so saving just three can be a big impact. And here in Montana, fire danger also a concern. Uh, what can we yeah. expect, Matt? Yeah, forest fires definitely going to be uh, the word here as we head up uh, going into tomorrow. Let's take a look. Uh, well, there is some good news. Temperatures will be a little bit cooler, especially in the Bitterroot Valley, so that'll be help to folks fighting the observation fire. However, we get into the 80s in those places where we are going to have some fire danger tomorrow. Here's that fire weather warning again, stretching from Phillipsburg and Deer Lodge to Butte, south all the way to the state line with Idaho and over to Yellowstone National Park. As I just said, there's, a, there's been a lot of lightning here today, so you already have a couple of maybe smoldering trees somewhere out there that are going to be subject to some very adverse conditions tomorrow. So everybody just keep your eyes peeled for some smoke. That does it for us. We'll have more local news for you tonight at 10. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night. Good night. Good night.